On this video, let's think about how we can use the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model to analyze economic fluctuations. The starting point in the analysis of short-run fluctuations is in the long-run equilibrium. In the long-run equilibrium, price expectations are equal to the current level of prices. Short-run and long-run output are equal to each other, and unemployment is at its natural rate. The economic event you will want to analyze will move the short-run equilibrium away from its long-run counterpart. The long-run equilibrium, remember, is where the short-run aggregate supply crosses aggregate demand. The economy will eventually go back to its long-run equilibrium, but the path of the economy as we move around the long run through a series of short-run equilibria is what we call a business cycle. So let me give you a recipe to follow. These are four steps to analyzing economic fluctuations. Number one, determine whether the event will shift aggregate demand or aggregate supply. Number two, determine whether the curve is gonna to shift to the left or to the right. Number three, use the aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram to see how the shift will change a short run output and prices in the short run. And lastly, use the diagram to see how the economy will move from the new short run equilibrium back to the new long run equilibrium. Now let's uh, practice um, a scenario so that you get an idea of how to use the formula. This will show you the effects of a shift in aggregate demand. In lecture face-to-face, uh, -face, we'll talk about the shift in aggregate supply. Now we're talking about the stock market crash, but the results from this exercise apply to any event that shifts aggregate demand to the left, whether it is the stock market crash, a recession abroad, a wave of pessimism, or any other. In this scenario, the stock market uh, crash reduces consumers' wealth, which suppresses their spending. We're thinking that that is going to affect consumption and therefore the aggregate demand curve. Now, in which direction? Well, if consumption falls, we think aggregate demand will shift to the left. The new short run equilibrium now is point B. At point B, prices are lower and unemployment is higher. Remember, fact number three in our first discussion talked about economic fluctuations and how unemployment and output move in opposite directions. At point P, prices are below the, the price level that expected, the people expected to see. So over time, uh, expectations about the price level falls. Wages fall and sticky prices become flexible and uh, reduce prices overall in the economy. We expect that that will move the short run aggregate demand to the right. And this process will continue until the economy arrives at point C, where GDP and unemployment are back at their natural rates and uh, the price expectations cut up to reality once again and are equal to the price level. Notice that in the absence of policy intervention, the economy self-corrects. Of course, this process takes time and policymakers may not want to wait. At point B, policymakers could potentially use fiscal or monetary policy to shift aggregate demand to the right and move the economy back to point A. But we will talk about policy interventions extensively in the future. Well, now we've figured out how to represent business cycles using the aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram. But in the real world, macroeconomists don't observe the events that happen in the model. The model is just that, a representation of reality, but it's part of a large thought experiment. So when we look at data and we're trying to compare what we are learning from the model with real world data, it's very useful to have the implications of the model in the same way that we see data in, um, at, the, at the national level. Uh, at the national level, we use time series data. So let's think about how output prices and the unemployment rate are going to move around in a time series format. So let's start with output. And let's say that the time before the event has happened 
is equal to time one. So at time one, the stock market crashes. Before then, the economy was at the natural level of output. As the stock market crashes, we're moving from the short run and long run equilibrium A towards a lower level of output until we reach the short term equilibrium B. And let's call this time two. Now that puts us into a recession. Now, as the recession is changing the level of prices, price expectations change. Again, like we said, uh, the short run aggregate supply shifts to the right, bringing output back to its natural rate. So we expect a movement back again to the natural level. And that happens uh, between T2 and T3. And we reach the equilibrium C. Now, this is what is happening to output over time. Let's think about prices over time. Prices, okay, before the stock market crash, and again, this is T1, were equal to PE1. Now, what happened over time was that prices declined after the stock market until we found ourselves in T2 at point B. But unlike output, they did not come back up. They actually kept decreasing until we reach our new long-term equilibrium C at point T3. So in here, you can see that although real variables go back to the long run equilibrium, just like the classical dichotomy would dictate, nominal values could go up and down and it could be a permanent change if the economy remains on that path. Now, lastly, let's talk about unemployment. So unemployment moves exactly the opposite of uh, output. So before the crash, we can think about, again, this is T1, the unemployment rate being at the natural level. But after the stock market crash, um, we would see a sharp increase in unemployment until we get to point B. And this is at time two. Now, remember, they move in opposite directions and the economy will self-correct and we will get back to C at T3. All right. And we expect to continue at the natural rate. So that is how you analyze a, um, an event through the lens of business cycle theory of the Keynesian flavor. All right, so it's your turn. Uh, please uh, stop uh, this video and work on this exercise. Please submit your answers on Top Hat. I will not review the solution with you here, but rather uh, during our face-to-face -face meeting.